Hi there, welcome to iQuanta YouTube channel which is dedicated to your success as a B-School aspirant. My name is Vikrant. I am your personal coach for all things related to English and communication skills. Along with that, I keep on bringing a lot of strategy sessions and sessions that work on the mental aspect of the preparation for you. So if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon so that you are the first one to know whenever we come up with a session. And today we are going to talk about an important milestone in the journey of a cat aspirant and that is when you are a hundred days away from the exam. Uh, this is what I typically call the business end of the preparation. This is where your preparation needs to be taken on to a, uh, onto the next level. On, on, your, your preparation needs to move on to the higher gears now and I will tell you how to put on that higher gear, how to move on to that higher velocity game in these in the VARC section over the course of next 100 days. So let's start with a simple question. What is our goal? Our goal is to be in the top 1% or in other words, to get more than 99 percentile in each one of the sections. And let us go ahead and see how we can get that score in the VARC section. So there will be a day when you will enter the examination hall, start the paper, the very first section is going to be verbal ability and chances are very high that there are going to be 24 questions there. That's something that they've asked for the last three years and I expect it to continue. Maybe they can revert to uh, the pattern used in CAT 2020 when they gave us 26 questions instead of 24. But this is the most likely scenario and they will give us 40 minutes for those 24 questions. Our performance needs to be of a level where we are able to get 99 percentile plus within this time limit from these questions. So what, how many attempts do you need? So if I look at the last, the data of the last three years, people who scored 38.5 to 45 net score, uh, were in the top 1%. They could get 99 percentile. So to pick up the higher limit of this, I'd say that you need to get 15 questions right, net correct, in order to get into the top 1%. So depending upon your accuracy rate, let's say you are operating at 90% accuracy. So at around 16, 17 questions, you can reach there. 80% accuracy, you can reach there at around 9, 18, 19 questions. But if your accuracy rate is hovering below 70%, then that will become a difficulty. Uh, that will become a challenge. So please make sure that you definitely stay above 70, preferably at around 80, if possible, push towards 90. Uh, so how do we reach this goal? How do we start attempting this many questions right during our prep? What's the plan? So here is the plan. Our plan basically has three parts to it. Part one is mastering the syllabus. Part two is testing yourself. And part three is analyzing that test to come up with ideas which are going to be very effective and useful for us. Uh, we want to make our preparation tailor-made. We don't want a preparation to be uh, like the preparation of anyone else or for anyone else. So let us see how we go there. So mastering the syllabus. So one very obvious thing is you need to know the syllabus. Now, if you are somebody who is scoring less than 70 percentile, then it basically means that you have not even finished the syllabus yet. So the goal for you right now is to make sure that you finish the syllabus at the earliest. So what is that syllabus? So within reading comprehension, these are the eight things that we generally advise people to go ahead and master. Now, when I talk about verbal ability in the CAT, the syllabus is pretty self-evident. There are these, here are these four question types that we treat as chapters and we go on to master. So the plan here is that if you are somebody whose score is below 70 percentile, please finish the syllabus. But then uh, let me give you a suggested action plan, a sequence in which you can move ahead. So first up, within RC, start with these two question types and see, 
are you performing well in the inference based questions and the main idea questions if not then this should be your major thrust moving forward thereafter focus on tone based questions now frankly in your exam you won't get very many tone based questions but tone based questions help you in eliminating answer choices in quite a few different question types for example inference based questions for example even in verbal ability when we talk about para summary i may talk about tone and how it helps us in ruling out ruling out op options uh, even in main idea questions for that matter tone can play a role uh, into helping us increasing our accuracy and therefore you would like to move on to this thereafter focus on rest of the reasoning based questions you know assumption strengthening weakening analogous argument because a large chunk of the questions in rc are of that type and once you've gone through this it's only then that i want you to look at the rest of the question types now if you are somebody who's already hovering around 80 percentile 85 percentile chances are that you haven't mastered some of these things see going through the concepts is one thing mastering is when you know that your score is consistently high when your accuracy rate is pretty good at least above 70 percent if not 80 percent so maybe some of these areas uh, are still hovering below 70 percent below 80 percent so you can go ahead and focus on those and along with it you can run a parallel track of verbal ability questions where you can start with para summary and then follow it up with either para jumbles or odd one out whichever one you prefer uh -huh. the order between the two won't really matter much uh, and then thereafter end it with para completion so please make sure that you understand all these concepts and you've practiced them to the level where you can say that now i have mastered it so i generally start using this label when your accuracy rate goes beyond 80 percent so below 70 percentile please go through all of these if you're already above 80 percentile you will or around hovering around 80 percentile you would still need to focus on some of these things if you are somebody who's scoring more than 90 percentile 93 percentile oh then i'll have some more suggestions for you later so once you've mastered the syllabus the next thing that you do is you test yourself how very simple write icats okay write these full length mock tests very regularly now how regularly do i want you to attempt these here is the frequency so for the next 21 days this should be the number that you target so aim for writing one icat one mock test every week thereafter when i talk about day 22 to day 60 increase the frequency right one mock every five days and from day 61 to day 90 ideally you would want to write two mocks every week and if needed you can supplement this with writing some sectional tests so you write section tests for additional practice you write section tests to identify a test taking strategy that works for you so you know you imagine that hey this particular approach is perhaps going to give me more marks so instead of implementing that approach directly in the mock why not implement that on a section test and at iQuanta we give you a lot of section tests right so initially I told you you have 15 section tests that are already available to you and moving forward we have plans we are actually working towards it that we give you 25 section tests more they are in the pipeline if you want us to work on it if you want us to work on it really hard take it seriously do it fast uh, drop it in the drop in in the comments below and tell us that you want these 25 section tests if there are a lot of you saying it i'll automatically be forced to prioritize it over the other things that i do so the section tests can be very useful for a bit of fine tuning of that strategy and then additional practice and see these are very important for those of you who are already performing very well in VRC. So in order to improve further, you need to somehow identify some sort of trend, some sort of pattern in your mistakes. That will happen only when all these things are taken care of. So that's about testing yourself. But then 
testing alone won't work this third step is going to be very important and that is effective corrective action how so let's see so basically uh, you need to learn to analyze the mock or the section test thoroughly so at iQuanta of course we use AI to help you an arrive at that analysis very fast but even if you're doing it on your own you'd notice you've gone through the mock within that section there are questions that you've gotten right so there are questions so there are two types of questions right there are questions that you attempted there are questions that you did not attempt now the questions that you attempted you'd either get them right or you'll get them wrong and within the questions that you got right there were some questions where your answer was a high confidence answer high confidence answer is where you're choosing a particular option and you know that this is right but then there are questions where your answer was a low confidence answer or in other words you actually guessed and your guess turned out to be right so when you analyze the section you need to know every single question that you marked where exactly in which category exactly does that belong oh, so if there is a question that you guessed but it turned out to be right so it was a fluke you cannot count on it to give you the marks in the next mock so once you've identified that make sure that you revise the relevant concepts so that the next time around you are able to attempt it with higher confidence Huh. And then there are questions that you could not solve, right? So maybe you got them wrong. Uh, maybe you could not even attempt those. So ask yourself some things, you know, why could I not solve it? Was it the lack of time that, you know, maybe I ran out, I ran out of time and therefore I could not really solve it. And if that was an easy question that you missed out on, that should bother you even more. So you need to look at your time management. You need to look at your question selection. Uh, and of course, you need to look at uh, how you can become faster. So can working on reading speed make you faster? Can identifying the exact process that is to be followed in every question type make you faster? Because then you won't have to think about it in the examination hall. So anything that you can think beforehand Think it beforehand so that in the exam you, you save that time, right? So focus on all those things and that should help. Then could you not attempt it because you did not have relevant knowledge? For example, it can be a vocabulary based thing. Ah, so maybe working on your vocabulary could help you or it can probably be a technique based thing. Maybe when you solve your para summary or your para jumbles, it's your technique that is flawed and that is why you get it wrong. So in which case you would like to ensure that you master your technique. Then uh, the objective of this analysis is shift all the syllabus items, all the learning objective into the rightmost column, but which rightmost column, where is it? So every single thing that we have talked about, make three columns. So the leftmost column is a column where you have things that can be termed your areas of discomfort. So your accuracy rate here is below 70, uh, below 50%. Okay. Then you have a column where your accuracy with which can be called your areas of comfort and your accuracy rate here is in excess of 70%, preferably 80%. And then there are these in between areas, 50 to 70%. So put everything here. So inference based questions, where do they go? Main idea questions, where do they go? Tone based questions, which column do they get into? Huh? Or if I talk about, let us say, uh, para summary, para jumble, where do they go? Right? So put it put them at their appropriate place and then whatever you do in between two mocks, yeah, moving from one mock to another, the time that you have in between, your goal should be to pick up one of those things and switch it over to the rightmost column, the column which talks about your area of comfort. So when you do that consistently, uh, the next time around when you go ahead to write your exam, you know that you just need to focus on your areas of comfort and that's it. 
and in between one mock and the next you try to put in one or two more things in towards your area of comfort so that is how your score consistently becomes higher that is how you ensure that even on a bad day you are able to get a sizable amount of score so that's a nice little way of tracking our progress and it will also help you with question selection so the goal is all the question types of RC, all the question types of VA, all those different genres of RC that you're today not comfortable with, through your effort, you should push them towards the rightmost column. Okay, so that's the objective. And here is linking it all with your daily schedule. So basically what I want you to do as of now is in RC, I want you to attempt 21 passages every week. Okay. Apart from that, you just ask yourself, is reading speed an issue? Is your speed low? Do you want to work on it? If yes, then you'd add a speed session to your list. What speed session? Uh, refer to your classes that we took here at iQuanta and you'd find a session where I talked about reading speed. So that can help. Then is accuracy an issue? If that is an issue, then what do you do? Check, you may need to enhance your comprehension. So if your accuracy rate in the comprehension based question types is low, especially idea restatement questions, then it's a very clear feedback that you need to work on your level of comprehension further. Huh. Uh, or maybe it is because you need to develop familiarity. You know, there is a subject matter, a genre that bothers you a lot. And uh, that working on that genre is going to be helpful and useful for you. Uh, or, or just simply identify a trend in the mistake. If you do not know what you need to do, identify a trend in your mistake. Now, this is where, you know, if you are a 90 percentile plus, writing all those mocks, all those section tests will be very, very important. Huh. Make sure that you go ahead and attempt tons of questions so that you are able to see a trend in your mistakes. I mean, if you're making just 10 mistakes a week, how would you identify a pattern? But if you increase your practice and you end up making, let's say, 20, 25 mistakes in that week, you'd be able to identify a trend and that will tell you the areas that you can still improve on further. So do that. And then similarly for verbal ability, I think it's more or less straightforward. Uh, attempt them in this sequence that I told you that these two are interchangeable. It doesn't even matter. Ah, but then treat them as a chapter where the goal is, okay, I am going to devote an hour every day or I'm going to solve say 10 questions every day. So start assigning some kind of timeline that, you know, 10 hours, 15 hours after which I expect it to be 80% plus the accuracy rate. So do it for all of these and then you should feel significantly more comfortable. So a sample schedule will perhaps look like this. You'd go through some RC passages. Uh, you'd go through some RC skill improvement sessions provided you need those. Then you'd be going through some paragraph based question or the other. Uh, apart from that, if vocabulary is an issue for you, then vocab. In case you're writing some of these other exams like SNAP and NMAT, then you'd probably also have a session on grammar. And additionally, of course, some section test, some mock test or its analysis is going to be a part on some of the days. So this is not exactly a part of your daily schedule or a daily calendar, but some of the days. Hmm. And don't worry, you have a lot of days. A quick reminder that at the end of the day, what you need for 99 percentile is 55 to 70%. And uh, even this 70% is needed in those years, in those cases where the paper was on the easier side. So if it is not on the easier side, you're basically looking at this more or less around 50, 55. Huh? Uh, and you can get that if you remain focused over the next 100 days. You can get that if you keep on believing in yourself if you back yourself to get that score there are going to be days when the scores are not going to be what you'd expected it happens there are days when the tests the section tests the icats beat you down but then you need to learn to dust it all off and then start your preparation again 
for just a hundred more days. And do remember that, you know, every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up, it knows it must outrun the fastest lion or it will be killed. Every morning in Africa, a lion wakes up, it knows it must run faster than the slowest gazelle or it will starve. It doesn't matter whether you are the lion or a gazelle. When the sun comes up, you'd better be running. So similarly, whether you're getting a 70 percentile or a 90 percentile today, doesn't matter. What matters is that every morning when the sun comes up, you start your customized tailor-made preparation and if you can do that for the next 100 days, I would see your result and your performance soar up towards the sky. So that's it from me today. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to press like and once again, do subscribe to our channel. We keep bringing a lot of content which is high value for you. So I'll see you in the next one. Until then, keep working hard.